Hello, we're at uh, Juan Pollo in San Bernardino. This is our flagship store. And actually this is also our oldest store and our largest uh, store. And then this is our typical rotisserie chicken cooker that we have in most of the stores. And when I started Juan Pollo in 1984, I had no idea how to cook a chicken. So I had to learn as I went. You know, what I did was my friend Armando Parra, he came and we, we kind of learned together. What he did at first, we would just put a chicken in the machine and we would cook for two hours straight. The only problem we found out is the chicken on the top will always cook faster than the chicken on the bottom. So we learned to rotate the chicken. So, so we, we found, also found out the good, we thought a good cooking time was two hours. Now we shoot for three hour cook time. And what we do, we start with the chicken on the bottom and as the ones on top get done, we, we rotate them upwards. And it's a very simple process and it looks simple, but every time I explain it to investors, would-be investors or other owners or managers or employees, it, they, they take it for granted that it's easy. The problem we have is we have to be able to cook a lot of chicken or no chicken at all, depending on our demands. In the uh, restaurant business, I can't control when people come in. As everybody wants the food at the same time, generally on a Saturday, Saturday night or holidays. And so I have to be able to cook a tremendous amount of chicken on busy days or have no chicken and, make, and also at the same time make them taste the same. So what we're doing here, this is a very typical day, so it's very simple, it's cut and dry. And whenever I try to train people, they, they have to learn to be here on the busy times when they're really busy, to really see to, to, to meet our demands. And our busiest days is always there. Every, every year is Mother's Day, followed by Christmas Eve, followed by Super Bowl Sunday. And so we have to be, have the ability to cook tremendous or cook nothing at all. Okay, 1990, 1993 was the worst day. We experienced the worst day in the history of Juan Pollo. And this was on Super Bowl Sunday. By 1990s, we uh, started to get really, really busy because there's only two stores in the area. And so we, we would, people come for Super Bowl. And uh, the problem with Super Bowl is everybody wants all the food at two o'clock. That's when the game started. And so what we did, uh, I had two stores, Ontario and San Bernardino store. So I was here at this store in uh, at nighttime, the night before preparing everything. My main cook, Joe Morales, he, you know, he worked from the very, the, from the very beginning. He was my main cook. And he had a habit of, of uh, smoking marijuana. And so what happened was we were stocked up the night before. I was, you know, getting everything stocked up. And the plan was cook as much chicken as you could starting at five o'clock in the morning. Because we needed to have at least uh, 15 trays of chicken, which is 150 chickens, done by 12 o'clock. Otherwise, we would never make it for the day. So, we, and then we would have to load up all the machines full and keep them full the whole day. That's the only way we'd be able to keep up. Because by then, we had maybe 20, 25 party orders. Each one was anywhere from 10 to 20 chickens. And this is all on order besides the walk-in. And what happened was, I was at the Ontario store that morning. Everything's planned. Joe came in early morning loaded a bottle of machines and, and cooked everything. And by the time I got to this store, I, was, I made sure Ontario store was doing well in the morning. I got to San Bernardino about noon. I thought it would be a piece of cake. And what happened was I walk in and the machines were all empty. Joe lost track of time. He cooked the first batch of chicken and it was all cooked and then he didn't, he didn't reload the machines. So even though we had like 12, 13 trays of chicken at 11, 30, 12, there was nothing going to come in after that. So of course, I was mad. I saw. I saw. I knew right away, as so I made them load up those machines as quick as we could. But it was too late. By the time one o'clock came around, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, we were out of chicken. People kept coming left and right, and we would, we started taping up tickets all over the place, and they they lined started lining out the door, and the people that had prepaid orders they started came coming in and said, "Well, where's our chicken?" And we had no chicken. There was no chicken to be to be sold. And Joe's brother, uh, Pancho, he was cutting the chicken at the time. And because I don't speak Spanish, he, saw, he was telling some of the Hispanic customers, well, come back later in a half hour, I'll get you the chicken. Even though I knew we were gonna get worse and worse and worse behind. And so by one o'clock, 1.30, the game's ready to start. We, we got to be maybe 200 chicken behind. Everyone's yelling and screaming. Everyone wanted their, their orders. 
and we're just taping tickets all over the counter. We're just taping, just, they're everywhere. And the line was all the way down to the next, outside the door, about 100 feet outside the door. Everyone's yelling and screaming, and it was the worst, the worst day of our life. And had we uh, prepared for it, we would have breezed right through it. You know, they, so the plan was just cook the chicken, keep a steady flow. And that's why I found out is timing is everything. If you don't, you, in timing and execution, everything. I had the plan down, but the execution was missing. And, by, and the game itself was a route, it was either the Dallas Cowboys beat, I can't remember who they beat, but 53 to 17, something like that. It was, it was the worst day in our history, by far.